So there's no pressure for whoever plays the Void to find farm. They just need to land a team fight spell. It's, that gives them an opportunity to go greedier here for Jackie. Now, Boom, though, Venge Drow, we've seen this a lot of times. They're the kind of team to play this one pretty darn fast, as though they don't tend to sit back and farm. They need to force these objectives quickly. We're just kind of starting. They're going to need to be careful about that Void. They need to be very aware of the flexibility MG Trust has with the hero and kind of protect their Drow in this game. Oh, they go for an Earthshaker pickup, and we've been seeing a bit of this popping up from uh, from multiple teams, the, the Pass 4 Earthshaker making its reappearance. I've got to say, though, every time we see it, it looks very weak. Uh, th there's no way for me to sugarcoat it. It always looks pretty weak. In fact, I, I do have a bad memory, John, but I think out of all the times we've seen it pop up, it may have won once. Uh, every other game that it's lost in, it just looks unbelievably just bad as a hero right now. It it does require that fast blink timing to really be able to do anything, and even then you commit Echo and your, your job's kind of done in a team fight. Even Fisher, quite a long cooldown, so you only really get one Fisher during a team fight. I'm not sure about this Earthshaker pick, especially when Motivate Trust, they go straight into that clockwork, which is really a direct counter towards the Earthshaker. Uh, very hard to lane against the clockwork if you are playing ES. In team fights, Rocket Flare can scout out where the Earthshaker is, and you can just hookshot and battery assault the Earthshaker the whole time. And if you do lock onto the Earthshaker, there's no Echo Slam coming. It's not like they build into a BKB later on. Generally speaking, they never even get the chance to get to that stage. But Boom Esports bring out the FBZ Timber. One of his specials, he is very dominant on this hero. But Motivate Trust, they go for the Invoker pickup, so a bit of a counter towards the Timber Saw now. Quaswex, EMP, very annoying for the Timber. I don't know, These both these drafts are starting to look pretty good. Yeah, I'd say, going back to the point of the Shaker, it has been... Actually, 50% win rate. I just quickly checked. I think it's been picked oh. four times in Southeast Asia. Wow. Winning two, losing two. So it's been a bit more break even. I think in this case for Boom, the main reason you pick it up is you have Fisher to cancel Kisses. Ten. And you have Fisher to kind of block the Void. We've okay. seen Shaker against Void kind of make it hard for the face's Void. They almost always commit their time walk first to gap close and then cast a Chrono. So as long as the Shaker's outside you can kind of block him away and protect the target. So there's a little bit of a back and forth there. Boom has the Venge and the Shaker to protect. I, overall, though, this is still a pretty hard game because just because of the team fight MG Trust is bringing out, you talked about the clock. It's just got this long-range initiation that you can follow up with your snap and with your invoker once you've got Sunstrike. So you can just immediately jump, delete the Drow. That's going to be the big one here for Boom. The Venge needs to babysit at the right distance to have swap ready. You, you've always got to be close enough to get a safe swap out for your Drow every single time because the initiation here from MG Trust is insane. And we still don't know if this is going to be the Jackie or Masaru's Void. I still feel like it's going to be Masaru's, but they could easily kind of shift that to just being the Jackie core because they have the Invoker. You've got Lacrity to play with. You can pile on the farm there, really build up in the Void. So the options are open. We'll see what they opt for. I think, boom, they've got a much more straightforward draft. We're just waiting for the Mikado hero. When you've got the Avenge Drow, I am looking at the Wind Ranger. Like, the TA's gone, that would have been better. But the Wind Ranger just might make its appearance here. Laning against Invoker is all right, because Invoker's first two, three levels are kind of meh. So the Wind Ranger should be fine if they want to go all in on this Avenge Drow strat. That's probably the best one, but the drafting is just... As you mentioned, you know, it's, it's got ways to work, but MG Trust just look a little bit more explosive. They do. It really is because the Earthshaker does need that blink up, and that's kind of what holds the hero back, whereas if you look at Motivate Trust with the clockwork, you don't really need anything. The, the hero is very effective without any itemization, and if you're having a really bad game, you just build into braces. Motivate Trust, they do pick up the Mars, so it looks like they do lock in the Jackie Void for this game. Playing those mind games, and I, I was kind of leading on your side of things where I was agreeing that Masros might play the Void here because we did see it, I believe it was yesterday, that they went the, uh, the offlane Void with the Invoker pickup from Fearless. Uh, still Boom Esports. Their last pickup, though. Makoto Hero. I would have liked to see the Puck as well as the TA, but both of those were banned out. 
You brought up the Wind Ranger. I think it is quite viable. I don't mm, particularly it. like it into the Mars, though, if I'm honest, John. Yeah. But I tell you what I would like to see. I wouldn't mind a Pugna. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good here. Um, the Ward would be excellent against Invoker and even Avoid. Um, of course, the D-Crap just ruins Faces Void before the BKB. Ooh. They go Ricky. I like so, it. So, what's her Mikado hero coming out here? Mikado Ricky down mid. All right. Yeah we've, yeah, we've seen this a couple of times, right? The Invoker versus Ricky. Mikado should make that work. And they've got to make the rest of the draft work as well. Um, you don't have, say, a natural empower here for Mikado. Um, it's not something that plays necessarily with a draw aura at all, but can kind of make use of the Venge aura. And there's some um, interesting timing here from Boom. So the mid game, Ricky can kind of go away from farming. That gives Hyde some space to get some farm for his Shaker, because the Timber Saw is also not going to seek too much past 15, 20 minute mark. So you do have room there for the Shaker to get into the Blink, and then you can start talking about team fights. But MG Trust again, it's a, a lot more explosive. It they've is. still got the Jackie Void. They've still got the Masters Mars. They've got the Snapfire and the Clockwork to. Second. initiate from a million miles away. I think there's a lot to worry about for Boom's lineup. And MG Trust, the execution's a bit more straightforward. And what does that affect on Boom, though? Well, John, if you played Diatide, you would know that there is a ghost reward you can get. It's a cosmetic. You you get it as, as a package. I don't know how many heroes it gives you at once, but it, it gave me like 10 or 15 different heroes. And basically, it's a ghost effect. Ah. Yeah, well, so that... you, you you get random heroes, mind you. You don't obviously you didn't get to pick, but I, I found it pretty cool. I gotta admit. Yeah. The the only thing I didn't like about it, John, is is they they give every piece of the set as a different item, so you can't apply oh. it. Like you can't just right click on one of the items and say apply the whole set. You have to go in and apply each and every set, which is kind of annoying. But apart from yeah. that, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that does sound mildly annoying, but that looks pretty good in Boomba. We'll see what his ghostly clockwork can do here. Should be relatively important for both sides to win out that laning. Again, looking at it, MG Trust have such aggressive years in this laning start. Snapfire, along with the clockwork, they will look to make some plays and try to zone out very hard. Should make for a great back and forth. Again, the last time these teams met, at least in the BTS Pro Series Season 3, that was a trio for MG Trust. So I think, boom, they want to bounce back from that. They want to kind of change how that went. See if, we've, if they've learned something here as they face off again. I believe they did meet in the group stage of a different tournament. That also went 2-0 for MG Trust. So it looks like something's happened to Boom since that time. But we'll see if they have learned. It's, it's been a bit up and down for Boom. Stark contrast to the PTS Pro Series Season 3. But... They're still a team to watch out for. You know, they've stuck around for a long time. They know each other's limits. And they tend to surprise you when when you don't expect it. So, you know, you can't really count out Boom, even though we do favor MG Trust Draft. I would agree with that, John. They, they are a very strong team. When, when they do have the right lineup and they're in the right mood, they are, they are very explosive, this Boom site. See how game one does pan out. Of course, to the viewers that aren't aware, Boom... If they want to move their way up to the upper bracket, they will need to minimum win two 2-0 victories. Uh, this will be the first one. And if they don't, I don't believe they can actually make it to the upper bracket. But I'm pretty bad at math, John, so we'll confirm that and <laughs> find out later. But the draft will be, or rather the game will be underway now. Game number one between Boom Esports and Motivate Trust. Uh, John, I was going to ask you as well. You put a, a bit of a Twitter post up with some food. You were having merienda. Mm -hmm. Very good to see you, yep. sir. Yep. You never answered my question, though. I, I commented asking you what that food was. You never told me. Uh, I wanted to tell, tell you here. That that second picture, the, the white stuff with the cheese on it? Yeah. That's, uh, that's called puto. That's puto. Isn't that a swear yeah. word, John? No, no, it, it, the swear words were the A, Mike. It's puta. This is puto, you know? Well, don't yeah, say yeah, it, John. Yeah. If it... It's oh. fine. It's oh. fine. We're laid back about it. Puto. It's All very right. good. Uh, uh, it's, I love it when it has that cheese. And this one is like a more like a commercial kind. My sister kind of called it like a birthday party kind of puto mm. that you find. So it's, it's not like the classic original homemade taste. It's very commercial, but it's nice, you know, it's just comforting because it's like a taste of your childhood. Okay. Yeah, kind of taste. It's pretty it nice. It looks delicious. It's, it's, a, 
it's like a steamed rice cake. I think if you're trying to find a generic sort of uh, description of it, it's a steamed rice cake. Pretty good. Pretty good. Very stuff. nice. Oh, it looked delicious, John. I'm very jealous. If you oh, yeah. wanted to ask me what I was eating, John, nothing. Nobody <laughs> made me any food. I'm starving uh... as we speak. FBZ is going to get chased down. Does go for the Whirling Death. He's going to try and fight this one out rather than chaining away, but this might cost him. FBZ is still trying to run. Jackie does have the time walk and should be able to get a first blood and does. Jackie picks up the first blood onto FBZ. And Boom Esports, they were feeling confident in going for that first blood kind of fight over that bounty room with that Whirling Death. It does end up costing them. It's a... Uh... Costly one to give out. FBZ does not want to get off to a slow restart. Jackie gets the first blood gold. He's on a very good spot now as the face is void. And Boom will have to put extra work in on this top lane. Now, you do have Hide around to try and help, but the weaknesses you talked about for Shaker versus Clockwork are in play straight off from the laning. Like, he can't really trade with Boom Bell. Boom Bell will want to gap close all the time, will just want to spam that battery assault, and Hyde is just forced to walk around like this. He can't really do anything right. Gotta love the clockwork, John. Always uh, such a great position for... If you if you want to climb MMR, learn to play clockwork before the patch comes out, because God knows Ice Frog, <laughs> he doesn't like these kind of heroes, John. He'll, uh, he'll nerf clockwork to the ground of the new patch, and I'll cry about it for the next six months while it's happening. But... Uh, until then, free MMR. It's a very, very nice feeling. <laughs> Still, we'll have a look at the mid lane for a second, John. Oh, actually, Courier? No, not going to go down. FBZ couldn't find the pathing, but Hyde does have the brown boots and will eventually get to it. And poor old Boombell loses his Courier and the salve that was on it. Yeah, that's a bit strange. Boombell stopped his Courier, maybe looking to go back and pick it up, but it does get punished in the end, so it's a... Uh... Decent amount of gold, but he's in position to go for a bit of a play, or at least harass him out. He's just going to throw his body at them. They know they can't fight back while that battery assault's going on. Of course, uh, in the mid lane, you'll see Makoto up against Fearless. I'd argue it should be a Makoto-favored lane on the Ricky, as uh, he does have very nice HP regen, and well, he has all these skills that allow him to really secure CS very nicely. Uh, Fearless probably going to have to play the more defensive game. Yeah, it's not going to be a smooth, not going to be a smooth ramp up for Fearless. At the least, he does have his persona loaded up, so I'm sure Fearless is happy about that. But it's all down to the supports here. If you can get your snap and clock to come in and kind of help you out, maybe you find a kill in the Ricky before his six is up, and you kind of chain stun him well. That's one way for Fearless to kind of build up. But so far, as a farming lane, this is something Mikado is going to be enjoying a lot and should look to really build up on. Like, if he gets this good start, maybe he gets to hit that timing with the rate bands into Diffusal at a really good point, then the Ricky's just going to take control. So you've got to watch out for that, which means our supports will have to rotate in. Speaking of, you know, the last set of supports are down bot. You've got Q on that snap. He's up there with Maseros on the Mars. They are up against Kezcute in the Venge and Dreamer Cell on the Drow. So it's that Venge Drow lane. It's very annoying to play against with level 2, level 3 up. You've got the range there from Vengeance Aura. You've got additional damage. Frost Arrows to come in. I mean, Masaros is fairly tanky with the value point in Bulwark. But there isn't too much opportunities here for MG Trust to go aggressive. Unless they get a good spear out, then they can get a cookie follow-up or vice versa. It's going to be a bit static. And you are getting slightly better farm on Masaros, but you aren't really zoning out Dream yourself. No, you aren't. But Kezcute is going to cop a lot of damage out from Q. It's kind of the one thing that is good in this lane, I would say, is the fact that Kezq can't really fight back up against the Snapfire. You just take so much harassment if you get close, and the attack range of Kezq is basically the uh, point-blank range of the Scatterblast. So every time you try, try to go after Q, he's just going to be able to set up for an easy Scatterblast. Comes in for the Power Rune, but Boom Bell will be the one to take it up at that top rune spot. And while that was happening, Maseros is going to go down. Dream Assault manages to find the kill on the Drow Ranger. Very nice kill to get while Q was out of the lane. And Fearless, you don't want to give with that. that persona, drives me insane, John. <laughs> yeah, he's just spamming out those voice lines. It's uh, very immature. Still Q. Let's go down. Another kill out for Dream Assault. 
And this is the kind of boom esports that we've been wanting to see over the past couple days, John. They are they are off to a very nice start. Yeah, this kind of start for your drow means he he's gonna have fast acceleration towards those power treads into the two rate bands, which is already up. You can expect maybe quick timings into the Dragonlands, Hurricane Pike. Uh, MG Trust need to be careful about giving that momentum away. Uh, they are waiting for levels for them to come out if they lose out here in laning. And trying to distribute the EXP here is going to be tough, although Mikado... Maseros is far forward. They have rotations. Hyde going to block the way off. And Maseros is going to suffer here down this bot lane as they want to give the kill off to Dreamer. So, and they do, but while that was happening... Beerless does end up killing off Makoto. And that was off the back of the rotation from Q on the Snapfire. And so overall, I'd say the trade was still better for Motivate Trust that time around. Yeah, um, taking out Mikado was the big one. We were talking about Fearless's lane being really slow unless the support rotation came in. Does pay off in the end. That kill down bot though looks to be opening up a shove opportunity here. So they've got Hyde camping the back. Looks like they want the tier one bot which is not the usual tower we see taken first, but I guess Boom at this point figure if they can get away with it, why not? You know, it's more map space you're forcing out. It's free farm for Dreamo Cell, and you're in a fairly good spot now. They are leaving their top lane alone, but FBZ is at the point where you can kind of get that done, and that's the beauty of the Timbersaw. Yeah, Jackie is definitely struggling now. FBZ, in fact, going in for a bit of a dive there on Jackie. He understands the Void can't do anything to fight back. I, I love the way Boom's played this laning stage. Just focusing on what you would argue are the real two big cores of MG Trust, being Jackie and Maseros. Of course, Fearless can also be that kind of figure in the team, but he's playing Invoker right now. And as we know from Invokers, they're not really those kind of tempo setting cores anymore. They are more of a supportive core in any sense, and especially this game, you are really just going to be there to get the uh, the Tornado EMP, as well as the Sun Strikes and Cataclysms off to, uh, to finish off kills. Still top lane, Boom Bell. Wasn't he a dive and does now with a great fish route from Hyde. And FBZ, able to take the kill with the Chakram. And Hyde, when I was talking crap about the Earthshaker in the drafting stage, John, but he is making it look really good this game. Yeah, he definitely is. He's at the right spot at the right time to find these ganks. And with this, they're going to be able to get a lot of damage out onto that top tier one. And this is just the Timber Saw alone. Like, there's not even anything coming in, not even a Siege Creep right now. So, you've got to watch yourself here for your MG Trust. Your Void can jungle, and that's exactly what Jackie's doing. He has the Morbid Mask up. But Boom's not the kind of team to actually allow the AFK farming that we've seen a lot of teams fall prey to it against MG Trust. So, Let's see if Boom understands what MG Trust is trying to do here, but Jackie is getting some space out for himself for now. The rest of the team is kind of suffering, though. Now Boom Bill going to be in danger. A really nice setup there from Kez Q. Doesn't show the killer. Now Q trying to help. May suffer for it, but they don't have a way to cancel the TP. Still a lot of patience there from Kez Q to just watch the clockwork wa walk up the stairs first and... Eventually gets the magic missile off into the arrows out from Dreamer Cell. Dreamer Cell, he's picked up three kills already on this drow. He's uh, second in net worth only to FBZ. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a really good start. And this is probably the dream start for a drow. So again, he's getting that ramp up into his Dragon Lance at a really good pace. Um, MG Trust again, he's not going to be able to punish in. Yeah, oh, Makoto, he's getting active now on that Ricky, and that's what you love to see from this hero. You don't really need much as the Ricky. In fact, Arena is going to be there. Masteros look to turn, does get a nice special spirit kill. Sunstrike came in from Fearless, which means he gets the golden XP going his way. Feel very nice for the Invoker. Yeah, and that helps Fearless out a ton. He's saving up for his Midas, it's flying out now. You're going to see that Ags Rush coming in here for the Invoker just to play with the Chrono timings that they can get out. They do have the Chrono ready in Jackie, but this does look to be a much more passive game for him. He's not going to even look for a value use of that Chrono as Boom is just applying way too much pressure across the map. He has no easy targets to solo and hope for backup. So that's, that's really the biggest point of contention here for Jackie. It's just steady ramp up, but this is not the usual start he gets off to and you do see Dreamer still playing in the exact same lane, so there's always the threat of backup coming in. 
They have to be cautious as Boom keep looking for more objectives. And they after do. that top tier one, they're going to In the river, though, Makoto, he's found out Q, John. There is not much of a way for Q to get out of this. He'll try to cookie, but Makoto will have the blink strike. Into that mid lane though, Boombo and Jackie gonna move in onto FBZ with the Sunstrike and Chaos Meteor, but it's not gonna be enough damage. FBZ, he's still alive, but the bashes do come in from Jackie, as well as the battery assault from their clockwork. And that would have been really bad had they not gotten that kill with the Chrono Committal, but they do get it in the end. They defend their tier one as well. They might lose Boombo now. Nah, just uh, scouting out those uh, camps again, but that's what you kind of want to see here from MG Trust. Jackie needs to actually come outside every now and again to use that chrono to find one and kind of build up that way. You're still finding yourself not too far behind here, six to four, one K lead the side of boom, but it's not a massive amount. The farm is fairly distributed across all the cores right now. So you're in a very good spot to kind of keep this game tied up. They will keep pressuring that mid tier one though. And without the chrono, it could be harder to defend. Well, with this draft on, when you have a Ricky, on your team, you want this mid tower gone ASAP. As it just opens up the map so nicely for Makoto to just roam around, but oh, Arena is gonna be there. FBZ, the only one caught, but they might be able to kill him with that Chaos Meteor and Sunstrike. They do get the oh. kill, but now the Echo hides in with a massive Echo Slam, but the Mortimus Kiss is gonna finish him off and they can't follow up. So they weren't feeling confident to dive right underneath that T1 tower. Maseros does eventually deny it anyway. That's a great team fight out for Motivate Trust. Yeah, they again get the team fight they want. They lined up, they deny the gold away. The map control still goes the way of Boom, though. So, as you mentioned, they can start looking around, scouting into that jungle, start contesting Jackie, perhaps, and try to make something happen there. They have evened out the net worth gap as well. It's less than 1k lead going the way of MG Trust, but that's exactly what you want to see. And Ooh, Ooh Boom Belt. Unlucky, did miss out on the hook shot. Uh, you don't want to miss too many of those as your uh, your kind of power spike as the clock does tend to drop off a little bit. Of course, he has a lot of solo pickoff potential on this clockwork right now, but you know, you give it five, ten minutes and suddenly he's just kind of a, a hook and a cog. Not really much else to do for him. Yeah, apart from the rocket flare as well, gives a lot of vision. So Makoto is working towards that Diffuse Blade quite nicely on the Ricky. He's a bit low in net worth in comparison to the rest of the heroes on the board, but at the same time doesn't really need as much, because Ricky is kind of broken once he has Diffusal Blade. Yeah, it's a smooth ramp up as long as Mikado doesn't lag too far behind. And I'd say within the next two to three minutes for this pickup, uh, obviously you want it earlier, but depending on how his lane goes, like he doesn't have a free lane. He's having to go here in the contested lane with Jackie. They've got Chrono ready. They're just camping out. They don't quite have detection, but they want the safe tier one now on the side of MG Trust. So Mikado's not really finding farm here. Up top, of course, they've got FBZ just clearing out this jungle. But all of this, MG Trust is just giving Jackie space in a very different way, mind you. This is not AFK jungle farming, but they are playing on the right side of the map for the space's void. And that's pretty much all MG Trust could ask for. I agree. Still, Dreamer Soul is farming very nicely as well on that Drow. Just really free farming in this triangle at the moment, and there's not really much they can do in the way of trying to gank him up, but instead, they can go after Q. Makoto picks up another kill on the Ricky. Very easy stuff for him. And Snapfire going to be free food for him all game, it seems. And uh, it's just about 1k away from having the full Diffusal Blade. In fact, even less than that. And that's when things get really started for Boom. You expect constant activity from Makoto once he does have it up. Whereas MG Trust, they are going to have to play a lot more passively until Jackie's ready to go. I don't think it's too passive that they have to aim for here. Again, they've got Chrono. They need to look at opportunities with a Chrono to play with. Maseros, Arena is there, but a nice swap out from Keskew, saving the life of Makoto. He does have a double damage, he's going to jump back in onto Boombell now. He's going to be slightly cautious here. Boombell, he's not that squishy. In fact, Mortimer's Kisses are going to come out, but Makoto will be able to blink away. And so they do still... Uh, they end up giving away a Venge kill, which is not what they want, but... I suppose at the least, this is still buying a lot of time for Dreamer Cell. It's been buying a lot of time for FBZ to keep pushing out that top wave. 
things are still going very, very nicely for Boom. I'd say not as smooth as they'd like, though. They're not finding a net worth lead. The map has sort of stagnated just a bit. Like, they haven't made progress on any of these tier 2. So, again, you're seeing MT Trust still finding that steady farm. It's going to be a BKB rush here for Jackie. And that's on top of the Ags rush for Fearless and the Ags rush for Q. So, you're going to have some major item spikes in next three to five minutes here if you're allowed to free farm into these items once you have that cataclysm once you have the gobble up it's gonna be easier for jackie to find pickoffs in that chrono with a bkb coming out as well he's not gonna care for the magic damage or control that could potentially come out here he's just free to chrono up not care about the shaker and just get the work done that's something oh. boom has to be cautious about i love what hyde was trying to do down to that bot lane john he was hiding the courier in the trees to make sure they did not see him get the blink up as he was farming the creep wave. Unfortunately for him, there's a very nice observer ward that gave that vision anyway. And now the hook shot, not gonna land. Boom Bell ends up missing again. And FBZ now, just gonna come in and kill him off. Meanwhile, Arena is going to be there by Maseros straight onto that bench, but Kezcoot surviving for now as Makoto comes in, but there's your Chrono now. Being committed by Jackie, but it is not going to help Makoto. He's out of there. Back in with the Echo out from Hyde and the Fisher. Makoto will get a double. Dreamer Soul picks up a kill onto Q. They'll find a fourth hero. That's all off the back of that missed hook. Boom Esports, it's a 4 for 1 trade. This, this draft, John, it is really starting to get online here for Boom. It definitely is. They're starting to find a grip. They're forcing MG Trust to play aggressive in a way that isn't lining up. Like, they wanted to reveal the Ags under Invoker there. The Chrono just didn't land onto the amount of heroes they want. You need to catch so much more heroes to work that Cataclysm, and it just doesn't come out in the right way. So, they get punished hard. Boom. Now have the slight lead in their end. They really need to... Get Boombell with the right targets, although. Shot in. They are going after Dreamer Soul. Spear is also going to be there, landing nicely, but the Fisher Hyde saving the day again with the double stun out. And now the split shot coming in from Dreamer Cell. Boombell's trying to control him up, but he just can't as Jackie gets chased down in the void. Dreamer Cell kills off Boombell off the back of Hyde. John, I'm, I'm really wishing I didn't talk so much crap about the Earthshaker pick now. So uh, Hyde is making it look amazing this game. He definitely is. He's just managing to split up MG Trust in a big way. And now, boom, get to go for those objectives. This is what we were looking for. They're starting to clear out the map. Tier 2 bot going to go down. MG Trust is going to lose some space to farm. It's not the most important Tier 2, but it will open opportunities for Boom to keep shoving a lane out now and kind of keep it shoved naturally. MG Trust. They need this BKB to come out in their faces void. They need a better initiation and better follow-up coming out here. They're just not connected. You know, like, Boom Belt's going in, but his team's not ready. The backup just isn't lining up. I think they're going to need the Ags as well in Q just to get the gobble-up play with the arena, perhaps, into the pool here. And boom, they're in a really good spot. Like, the farm here for Dream Assault is just going very, very well. Yasha's up, Dragonite's up, oh, going no, for boom the Boombell, no. It, it, you know what it is, John? It's one of those games. When you play heroes with a skill shot like the clockwork, you miss that first hook of the game and you miss every hook. Mid lane. Oh, yeah. Makoto, he's jumped Jackie. Jackie's in trouble again. Hide. He's there with the control as well. Oh, Masteros is going to try and come in and clean up. Cataclysm is going to fly in. They do at least get the Ricky. In with Boombell, he's got the battery assault and the cogs out, but Hyde's going to be okay to walk out of there. And while Makoto did end up dying in the end, for the sake of killing off Jackie, I don't think he minds. No, definitely not. It's a, it's a worthwhile trade for Boom to keep Jackie down. They're doing the right thing. This is something a lot of teams don't do, but they are hunting the right targets here. They're giving, they're still giving out space for Dreamer Cell to grow big. And MG Trust are just kind of playing a game that we're not used to seeing from them. They're missing their hits. They're not quite finding the pickoffs they want. They are taking a more passive position with Fearless. Uh, again, on this Invoker, he is just trying to build some farm up, get some split push going, but he's not making the plays for his team. And it is somewhat costing MG Trust now. Now, they're not too far behind in terms of gold. They are just 1k behind. So they, they are finding farm. 
Oh, still Fearless. working the map well. Fearless is in trouble, John. Makoto spotted him out for a split second and knew he was still down to that bot lane. And that is your highest net worth hero going down for Motivate Trust. You see how easy it is for the Ricky to do that. It, it's it's child's play for Makoto. Yeah, he's just he's allowed to go around this map. There's not too much a vision here from MG Trust. You know, it's not like one of those games where you see a ton of sentries down just to secure it. And you need to be a bit safer. Like Fearless is just trying to buy that space out. He does need his farm as the invoker. He's rushing the BKB as well. Without a uh, four staff here, it's gonna be always difficult once the smoke screens out. And the Roche is just gonna go. Nice quick Roche on. They do scan it out, but it is just way too late. MG Trust. Bimbo, are you gonna hook shot in? I think it's a bit too risky for that. I'll take that. He might still try to hide here. Mind you, Hyde's almost got a four staff up. That's a uh, really bad news for Boombell. Nice blink away as well. Having the vision on the high ground, Boombell will see it now and destroys that ward very quickly. But well, they're just missing out on everything here. Even the outpost was taken. Makoto says, thank you very much for the easy kill. I'll take it. Yep, um, it, this is not the same performance we're used to from MG Trust, but Boom has read them, uh, are playing them like a fiddle right now. They're just really not finding the angles. They keep sitting on these spells. They're still waiting for Jack to find farm. He's sharing farm with Fearless, and that's not what we're used to seeing. And Boom is using this time perfectly. They're just shoving in top. They're waiting for a response. They're clumped up as a team on the high ground. So you can't really go for the defense as MG Trust, but they don't want these towers to go. They're just kind of forced to watch. They're playing this really well, Boom Esports. You need a big chrono here from uh, from Jackie, right? Into the Cataclysm. That could turn everything around for MG Trust, but they need to find it soon. He's got the 10 second BKB up now, so we might see it soon, but Maceros goes for a spear. Doesn't really latch on FBZ to that tower, though. You've also got the gobble up there from Q, so they definitely have some oh. defenses. Boombo gonna jump in. He wants his Earthshaker dead straight away, but Makoto is gonna get in and clean him up. Now Maceros is in with the arena. Chrono oh does not God. catch anyone. He wanted to fight Makoto, but he does not get it still. On to Dreamer Cell. They do get the Aegis, but Makoto, he's cleaning up the back lines. He's, he's killed off Q, and now Dreamer Cell back up. Jackie trying to run, cannot do so. Maceros on the run. Makoto is going to chase him down. And with the smoke screen, there's no way out for Makoto. And now the Echo Hide. Oh He's got the back lines as the Earthshaker, but there's not going to be follow up. Yeah. FBZ misses the chains on his own tree, but Makoto says, screw the tree. We'll go into the tier fours. We don't need to wait. Oh man, MG Trust. And they, they've put everything into that one basket and oh, they just keep dropping. That. Yeah, they've got Makoto, excuse me, rather Fearless on the Invoker and he does die. Makoto, do you want to keep jumping after Q? Looks like he'll leave him alone for now. But that Chrono we just saw, Jackie, he does tend to play on that greedier side of things. But you may as well have just kind of held on to that Chrono as Makoto, he was already out of there. Obviously, Jackie didn't know that, but it is very, very hard to catch the Ricky, as it is an extremely slippery hero. It is, and now MG Trust are her racks behind. They've got the top wave that's going to constantly shove in. MG Trust needs to play with a chrono. There, there is absolutely no two ways about it. They went for a defensive build on Jackie with a BKB rush. They went for the Ags rush under Remoker. They went for the Ags rush under Snap. They need the team fight to come out. They need to either depend on Jackie or depend on Maceros with a Blink Arena. One of them has to at least line up, and so far none of them have. Uh, so they've got to rethink their approach, get some control back in the map, maybe get some wards out right now as it's pretty blind, and Boom's just allowed to run around all over the place. They will eye that in last Tier 2 now, and even without the Aegis, I don't think Boom's too scared. They know how far ahead they are. That they do. We're going to be somewhat more cautious, though, without that secondary life. You saw Dreamer Soul, he do it doesn't take much to kill the Drow once you've caught him. The problem is catching him. Uh, apart from that one death with the Aegis, he has not died. 7-0-8.
He's uh he's sitting very pretty on this Drow Ranger right now. Once that BKB's up, it's gonna get that much harder. Meanwhile, you look at Jackie, he's struggling for farm to say at the least. Very unusual kind of game for him. And looks like he is gonna work towards the MKB. Already has the Blitz Knuckles up, but he, he's pretty far away from finishing that item off. It's, uh, it's, this is not the usual farming uh, movement that we're used to seeing from Jackie. It's not the same escalation. He's stuck at 10k. You mentioned it, but he's below everyone else by a significant amount. And it's just down to boom. They, they've solved the issue with MG Trust. They've, they've got the answer. Just hunt Jackie down. And that's what they did from the start. It's never been an easy game for Jackie. He has been focused down. It's also down to being a bit greedier in this draft. Like you go Invoker Void, you rush the Ags and you don't play fast. It really falls flat. Tier 2 mid now is going to be, again, the next target. And I don't think MG Trust wants to fight. They are lined up for it. But I think they might have to just wait for the high ground. They've got to land, land a big, big chrono. I mean, that's the only way I see them coming back. They're going to smoke up. If they can get a three or four man, it could all work out. But Keskute needs to be caught in that chrono. Otherwise, he's just going to swap them out. And now, Gobble Up is there with the arena coming out as well. They're trying to take down Keskute. Now, Jackie jumps in with the BKB after hide, but they've lost Boombell already. Now, Jackie is probably going to chrono here on the Drow Ranger, but Keskute is around for the swap. The Cataclysm only kills off Keskute. Still, they will also kill off hide, but now Dreamer Soul can just get to work with that Drow Ranger. Fearless, he's trying to fight back, but FBZ is going to be there with Makoto. This BKB will, be, will do nothing. It'll just do nothing for Fearless. He can't fight back. He's lost his cause. That tier 3 tower is set to fall as Masaros going to try and go in for a spear. Makoto is going to be safe. FBZ going to control him up with the Yules. And Masaros is just set to die. Such a dominant performance here from Boom Esports. And I think a lot of this, John, it goes back down to this mid Ricky pickup. I don't think Jackie felt safe on the map without knowing where Makoto was this whole time. Yeah, he, he just wasn't able to get that steady farm. He wasn't able to line up his early Kronos as well as we'd like him to. Now two racks is behind. It's not just the Ricky going around the map making it unsafe, but he also made it super hard for Fearless to get a smooth ramp up. And that's one thing with the Invoker. Like, you do want to play fairly quick. They constrain themselves too much here with those big team fight spells, whereas Boom can really just run at you. They don't have any major spell besides Echo Slam to wait oh, for. Jackie, no, oh, Jackie, no, no, Jackie! Boom Bill, gonna hook shot in to try and help. He's gonna go down. That's the only place they thought was safe, and it is not. Oh, Boom, they've got their number. They've been studying, John. Masaros gonna go for the arena, but a nice juke out there from Makoto into the Cataclysm. It does kill off Makoto. Still, Dreamer Soul gonna get to work now onto this boss, and that'll be Masaros going down. Meanwhile, Fearless taking a lot of damage from the split shot, but not quite enough. But boom, they are still in prime position to try for this tier 3 tower. Yeah, it's just. Nothing to stop them. No Chrono to be scared of, no Arena just yet. The Gobble up misses as well, and it's just a very slow but steady push. There's just really not much here. BZ, Yule's up. Boombell gonna have the control, but look at the damage out with that Whirling Death. They can't kill him, he's trying to get out of there. Jackie eventually gets in, and Fearless picks off the kill. And on with that, it seems like Boom Esports have smoked up and they're just gonna run away. They don't want to give any chance of a comeback here to motivate. Yeah, okay. so it's a smart, safe play out. MG Trust will get some space back. They get the D ward out on the ward that was keeping track. So you do have some space now to get some farm. It's not going to be amazing. They don't have too much time left. The rush is fairly quick as well. So everything's just stacking against MG Trust. It's going to respawn in two seconds. Trebusel doesn't quite come in in time, but the courier will spot it out. And they should know it's up. Boom can easily go for the next Roche. MG Trust will have to contest. Now, they do have Chrono, and they can excel in these tight spots. They need to be aware that the Roche is up and need to be ready to fight in. They just 
if they can catch the Coronator Arrow and Tree Heroes, they find a win, they get the numbers advantage, they can easily look for ways to come back in, but for now... Oh, Makoto making the jump in onto Boombill. Oh, Boombill's having a very tough game. Just basically got Tranquils and Braces, that's it. Into the Roshan they go. Knowing the Clockwork won't be there to attempt to steal. The only thing Motivate can do is try to go for the big team fight, but they're nowhere near. They're just trying to farm up while they have time in their own triangle. That'll be your Aegis and Cheese going to Boomers. Like I said, Jackie, he's just trying to get the MKB up. That's all he can do right now. It's a miserable game here for Jackie. Uh, he bought the Demon Edge there for a second, but he does need to have buyback gold available, so he does hold out. But the team fight's coming. Boom. They've smoked in through the mid lane. Spot out Q. That should be a nice easy kill, but no. Ghost Scepter is there. Boom Bell again with the hook shot. Not really landing, and now Maseros has been caught out and will go down. Makoto picking up another kill for his team. They're on to the final racks of this dire base. Is there a pace race going on? Yeah, yeah, there is. Fearless, he's pushing the bot lane. It's not really going to be fast enough. Megas are up and boom. They'll keep going for T4 towers. Passing on to Boom Bell. Chrono, Jackie. Oh, oh, he only got Kezku. Dreamer, so what a four laugh away. Gets out of there. Now BKB's up. Makoto's in. Jackie's gone. There's the Echo out from Hyde. The game should just be over. And they do pie back and call. I was going to say they might try one more time, but without the Chrono, without the Cataclysm, there's just no way to win the team fight. And Boom Esports, they take a very dominant game number one. Yeah, we talked about the draft looking great for MG Trust, but they couldn't pull it off. Like, you know, we expected them to be able to get the farm out for Jack, you know, kind of play like the past games. Boom had their number. They knew where to go. They got the lane matchups they wanted, and they, make it, they made it super difficult for both Jackie and Fearless to find that steady farm, and it cost them. They depended too much in that combination with the Faces Void, with Invoker to really win out, and boom, they get to play this excellent Drow Venge strat, and Mikado was just online from his mid matchup. MG Trust will have to adjust their approach as, boom, looks like they've kind of figured it out this time. That they have. And, uh, I've got to give real props to Hyde, John, on that, uh, that Earthshaker. I mean, he really just secured the early game for the side of Boom Esports. And that's what made this whole draft possible. As we saw, they just made sure Jackie never felt safe across the map. If he wanted farm, he had to take risks to, to get it. And well, every risk he took just didn't work out for him. Still, we'll move on to game number two. We'll see how Motivate Trust want to switch things up. And we'll see if Boom can keep this momentum to try and get themselves a 2-0 victory in this series. It is MLP Dota and Genix Fire. We'll see you all again in about 10 minutes for that second game.